All right then, so in the last lesson, we installed React Router version six and we tried to run our project and we got all of these errors right here. And the reason we're getting these errors is because we're trying to use React Router version six, but our code is geared up to using version five and there's a lot of breaking changes when we're using React Router version six. So we need to change our code now and update it so that we don't get these errors. And that's what we're gonna do over the next few lessons. Now, the first thing I want to do is comment out wherever we're using nested routes, because some of the errors that we saw are caused by the nested routes, but we're not going to cover those until later on. So I want to comment them out now so that it's not causing those errors in the browser. So first of all, we have nested routes in the product details right here. So I'm going to highlight all that and control forward slash to comment out that. And again, up here where we use use route match, I'm going to comment that out as well so that it doesn't cause errors. And also, in fact, I'm gonna delete it from here because we don't actually use use route match anymore when we're using nested routes in React Router version six. So I'm gonna save that. And hopefully now this is gonna cause us no errors. And then also inside the about component, we have a nested route right here. I'm gonna comment out that as well. And I think that's all I need to comment out. Yep and save it as well. Now we will get warnings because we're importing routes and this component right here, and we're not using them anymore. And same in the product details page as well. We're importing the offers and the route component and we're not using them. So we will get warnings, but they're not errors. Okay, so now that's out of the way, I want to talk about how we use the route components in version six over here. Okay, so this is all of our routes that were created and these are the components right here that I wanna talk about specifically. However, just quickly, first of all, I wanna talk about this switch component. Now, typically, we normally put all of our routes inside the switch component, and that means that only one route can match at a time inside the switch component, and therefore, we don't see multiple different pages on the screen at once. Now, in React Router version six, we don't have a switch component, so this is gonna cause an error. So I'm going to delete it from here. And instead of the switch component, we have a routes component. So first of all, I'm gonna highlight that and highlight this and change it to routes, plural. So when we're using version six of React Router, we have to place all of our routes inside a routes component whenever we have a route that we want to register. If we didn't have this component, it wouldn't work, it would cause errors. We have to wrap all of the route components inside a routes component. So I guess kind of the switch component is replaced with the routes component. Now we have to import that up here as well, routes like so. So that's the first change. Now I wanna talk about these route components right here. So when we're using version five, we register our paths like this and we do that exactly the same in version six, so that bit doesn't change. However, in version six, the first thing is, we don't need this exact prop right here because the default behavior now of these route components is to exact match, which is pretty nice. Okay, so that's the first little change. The second change is how we actually register what component or JSX we want to show for a particular route. So this time around, we don't nest our component inside the route component, okay? Instead, what we do is we get rid of that, like so, and it's self-closing, and we have an element prop on the route component. And this element prop is going to equal to some JSX, where we can specify what component we wanna show for this particular route. Now, you might think this is the same as this thing up here, but it's not. We don't use this anymore either, because we just kind of reference the component right here that we want to show for this route. But this time, this has to be JSX. Now this is not JSX, we're just referencing an import right here, an imported component. This has to be JSX, so we have to output the tag itself. So this would be about, like so. And this is JSX, right? So we replace the nested component about with this prop elements, and we set that equal to the JSX that we wanna show for this particular route path. So now we're gonna show this for forward slash about. So let me change this to elements as well over here. And this should be the actual JSX instead of just referencing the home import. And then also we can update all of these 
So let's get rid of the closing tag, make it self closing, and then add elements like so, and set that equal to the product details component like so. And then finally, we'll get rid of this one, make this self closing, and then say elements is equal to products like so. All right, so now all of these should work. Now, we're going to try this out first of all, then I want to show you something else very quickly. So now in a browser, we don't see any errors. That's always a good sign. And if we click around these, they all should work like they did before. Awesome. Now, obviously, if we try to use those nested routes, then it's not going to work and we don't see anything on the screen. But we'll come to nested routes later on. But all of those basic routes now are working. OK, so that's good. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is that we can inline some JSX template inside the element prop as well, instead of just kind of referencing these other drop in page components. So let me do an example to show you. I'm going to create a new route where the path is going to be equal to forward slash test. And then we have an elements prop as well. Now, inside this element prop this time, I'm going to just create some JSX template and we do that inside parentheses. So now I can say down here, OK, well, we'll have a div tag and let me do this correctly. Div like so and close off that div as well. And inside the div, we can have an H2 that says test page. And then below that, we could have a paragraph that says hello. All right. So now we're saying basically when we go to forward slash test, show this JSX as the page content. So let me save this and see if it works. OK, so now if I go to forward slash test, then we should see that new test content right here. So that's showing as the page content. Awesome. All right, then. So just to summarize, the switch tag is no longer used in version six. And instead, we wrap all of our different routes in the routes component. If we don't do that, then it's not going to work. Now, each route component should have an element prop where we output the JSX we want to render when a user visits that particular path. Now that can be inline JSX template like this test route right here or just a page component tag. And finally, we don't need the exact prop for exact matches anymore because that's now the default behavior of version six. All right then. So next up, we're going to look at redirects and the navigate component.